It's finally time! I missed this premiere a little bit because I was at a con, but I'm back! And oh my god, I've been doing this a long time. I remember covering Talos Principle when it first came out and thinking, oh... They're, the sequel plans are technically in the works, but they're gonna make a whole serious Sam game first? Oh, it's gonna be like 10 years before another one comes out. And here we are nine years later, and I'm still here. I, I'm a little upset that it's been nine years already. <laughs> But go check out the original playthrough of the original game and its DLC if you so desire. I was there. I sound different. I was a different human being. A prophet hath no honor in his own country. I have always felt that a human being could only be saved by another human being. I'd be curious to see where this goes. This, the previous game was a puzzle game that was very religiously coded, but it was a bunch of robots in an AI simulation. And as over the course of it, you realize that humanity has died. And they're essentially iterating on program designs of AI that will then become the new humanity. Like if I remember correctly, and that was some pretty that was some pretty bad screen tear, so just give me a second to ha ha ha. There we go. Hope that doesn't happen anymore. Behold, child. You are risen from the dust, and you walk in my garden. Hear now my voice, and know that I am your friend, and I am called Elohim. Elohim is back, okay. And I guess we're back in the simulation, one way or the other. But ultimately, we, we found out that humanity was destroyed, I think, by a plague? Which, ha ha, ha 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 ha. Uh, and they were essentially iterating over and over again forever in the simulation on these people, like us, these these AI simulations. And uh, essentially, once, once someone was finally properly complete, they could then be exported out into like this robot body to sort of recreate humanity and repopulate the world in a sort of like walking facsimile of what came before but I might be wrong because it's been like nine years and I have not replayed the game since I thought I'd cover more of the mods and whatnot and custom campaigns maybe some day I still will or something but I ultimately there's just there's infinite competing things for, for time and that never quite happened same thing with Legend of Grimrock so I'm wondering if this is going back in time to the same period and we're just sort of going with another parallel character that happened back then or if for some reason Elohim was made necessary again I mean I made to revisit the plot of the first game a bit between episodes too but either way we are still here for the puzzles more mostly so even if they do retread the same plot uh, akin to like Resident Evil with Raccoon City I don't think anyone's gonna be that torn up if they kind of run with the same premise. But this is still a barrier. This game is 70 gigabytes. The original game was six. <laughs> I was like, 70 gigabytes seems like a lot for a puzzle game. All right, so we've got a physical barrier, which means we're not getting past that, but you can see past it. Having seen what happened last game, I'm a little jumpy about like these trees and what secrets might be waiting because the last game had some absolutely wild secrets hidden through the entire campaign and I didn't start finding them till really late in the playthrough because I was pretty conditioned to just be like hey let's solve the puzzles and then move forward the obvious goal and path and so on let's see can I grab you no it, okay it forces me to walk to it and then go pick it up so this is a problem, because I, I have one jammer. I'll call her Lammy. And with only one Lammy jammer, then I can't get past this next barrier. That's a, oh. <laughs> okay, that's my fault. Yeah, that's that type of barrier, which is just not a barrier. I believe it's a barrier that stops you from taking 
Yep. Like the ones in Portal. It stops you from taking stuff out of the puzzle. <laughs> Not always very effectively, in fact. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if I can jump out of this level here. But we know for a fact now that these games do give you bonus puzzles that are built around you realizing you can take these out of the levels. Okay, so now that's just a tutorial that I was getting mixed up on because purple barrier versus blue barrier. Whoops. I love that. The, gl the glitching environment. The first hints that this was all fake. But we're past that now. Doo -doo. Okay, so this is where the games get dangerous because that's when you start wondering if you can jump out. But I'm going to squash secret hunting thoughts for a little bit and just give us some forward momentum for now first at the jackals that's very sussy <laughs> I do wonder if you can get away with something there I wonder if they'll use the same QR codes and terminals. You will stay here only for a little while. Soon, you will awaken in a new world. But first, you must undertake the trials of initiation. They will help me prepare your vessel. So the answer is yes. Do not be afraid of these dream figures and their messages. They are merely aspects of yourself. As am I, after a fashion. I must forge the tools by which humanity will rebuild itself and transform the world into the Eden it never was. The blacksmith. So given the endless iteration that is built into how this all works, in some ways, the other people leaving QR codes are my siblings, and in other ways they are me because we are all just versions of the same iterating program as they try to reach this final form. That's a weird seam to see through. Oh, there's the hub. Got it. It's a really cool idea. It's also reminiscent of a, a book that I read in college that was like, I think it was called The Prophet or something. Or I, I'd have to look it up better. But, uh, hello. Yeah, we need. Oh, so these are these are back. I was really bad at these. Okay, they're, that that gets added to our objectives. We need the the. So the, there's a lot of familiar elements that are still here. Oh, different colored ones. And those are yellow. You may linger in my garden for as long as you wish, but remember, my child, that the new world awaits you, and this place is only a dream. Don't taunt me. Don't taunt me for my commentating ways. I think it was called the Reluctant Prophet, and that... No. That's a very different reference to make. That's another book that's come up a lot, but not, not this time. Now, I'm thinking of Andrew Weir's The Egg was a story where somebody dies and is then talked to by God, but the God is just an alien, and they, they reveal that the protagonist is also an, an alien just like them, like the same type. And what they do is they go back onto the planet and they're going to be reincarnated as another person. And it turns out that, and this is a short story, this isn't really spoilers, this is just a premise and the premise is the story and that's the whole story. But that one person kept going down on Earth and being reincarnated as every single person on the entire planet. So everyone they've ever met, everyone that was ever kind to them or cruel to them was actually them at some point. They either will be that person or have been that person until they are every person on the entire planet and then they hatch into a god once they have lived every human life ever because they were every human and the the earth is the egg for a god. Which is a really neat story premise and weirdly resonant to what's going on in, in Talos Principle with the fact that as far as I can tell, at least on some level, every program character is kind of the same person on some level. But anyway, this is a place where we can get these three symbols, which are the same ones in the top corner that I need to open that door. So straightforward beginning. Hello. I have additional box now. Oh, it's up there. Gotcha. 
No, it's fine. There we go. It's a very interesting approach to jumping. It's just a lot of game. A lot of these games will just require you to do like uh, just regular ass hopping around and everything. So this game allowing you to uh, just have these like this the feet just show up and that's like you press space and you will do an arc to that spot and it's just safe. is is an interesting approach. Let's see. I can't take this with me. Or I almost can. You can't get it past the barrier on its own. But there is some ability to take them with you out here. I don't think this is tall enough. You can't make it out here. I guess it's ultimately a little pointless to try, because I can just do it from inside here. But basically, the most you can probably manage is taking this one with you. And I don't think that one's going to let us hop out or anything sneaky like that. Not yet. And I don't think I can grab the one from that far down. Oopsie. And, they, and you can't take him back out here. I said I wouldn't try too hard at secrets, but I am poking at it a little bit. <laughs> Got two boxes, and that, and that. Okay. So this boss sets, this box sets up the idea that you can hop over fences with boxes. We're gonna need a staircase out of, made out of three of them. And I can't take it through that barrier, but I can grab it if I put a box on the other side. Da 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 Big gate in the way, very high. I don't think we're getting past that. Now they're X'd out. You lo we, love a we love a video game, a puzzle game that's navigatable. <laughs> and you can tell what the hell's going on and where your remaining uh, objectives might be. I just like a cleanly readable game. That's nice. And in some level, I think that's one of the tricks the game pulls on you is that it gives you these. Oh, this is making they're making sure that I know that I can grab these from above. On some level, I think the game being so the cleanly you are collecting are not mere toys. They are symbols of the process by which our people were created. On some level, I think the game being so cleanly readable uh, is also how they lull you into a false sense of security that makes the secrets more effective because you are kind of following a clear path of how to continue forward, which I think is itself... I think that was part of the subversion element, is that like this is the path of Elohim, and it's a straightforward thing of, of series of objectives, and just the way you're supposed to be going. And as is often the case, because it's just a satisfying thing to do, so who cares if it's a trope? Uh, almost every single game in this genre takes the narrator character and turns them either into a villain, or someone who's lying to you, or someone that doesn't necessarily know best and you can some way subvert or show up. And, sh or show up. and there's almost always some kind of deeper secret you can uncover. And they often tie that either to the main narrative, like in GLaDOS with Portal, port, Portal with GLaDOS, where you just do that by default. Or just a dozen other games where there's like the, the main ending that you get by just following instructions and doing the main objectives is like a, a generic-ish ending and then something deeper and weirder happens. And, and, and that allows you to subvert what's going on if you go find the secrets and other paths and so on. And it's, it's, it's in almost every single game in this entire genre, but I won't complain about that because ultimately uh, it, it's, it just fits so well. It's so inherently good about, like, these are puzzle games. They're about solving problems and being faced with seemingly impossible objectives and then 
overcoming them. Like one of the mo one of the core things that like like these are these are tutorials, and so they don't have that. But when I, when you get to the good puzzles, the idea is that you see a contradiction. You're faced with a scenario and objects, and it doesn't make sense. It should be impossible to solve this thing, and then you eventually realize the thing you're missing that makes it doable. So then getting outside of the prescribed area and doing stuff that feels that genuinely like you're not supposed to be doing it just is like an, it's a a natural follow-up on that concept and so having the narrative like interact with that ludo narratively like that's just good <laughs> even if it does kind of lead to this almost the same premise every time it's uh it feels missing when it's not there and it's really hard to replace that narrative with a different narrative because it'll still deal with the same themes and like the same like mechanics one way or another or it won't really fit being a puzzle game very well so it's kind of dumb to complain about and you can always just retech you can always just like come up with a new flavor for the whole t thing and a whole new th like this like this whole thing like no one's going to compare what's going on here quite with what's going on in portal unless you're gonna compare like you know this like religious iconography with uh corporate capitalism which uh has not not been done before but static pressure so so i can do that but i cannot jump to it in time i'm pretty good about having these barriers be fast enough that you can't get past them in subversive ways we've got a fan The fan does not work. The fan can be used to press a button. So that's fun. The fan works when the button is pressed. It is attached to gears and mechanisms. But I can probably use the fan to block this button and then grab these boxes. Don't think we're good. Eh? No, we're not getting up there. There's no way. Unless... Um... Okay, so the other side of that is just there, so there's nowhere to go anyway. So there's no reason to look into that as being a potential secret anyway. I don't know why there's two boxes, though. That's interesting. I, should, I probably should carry it with me. I forgot that... Huh. Right, okay. There we go. Yeah, fans are a little goofy in this. They don't really... They do lift you in the air, but there isn't like a... How do I put it? The boost you often get from fans in games, where you jump on it and then it kind of launches you at, at the beginning and you can like land somewhere. You're pretty statically stuck in the beam of a fan and they can just awkwardly fall out of it, but it's not going to boost you up on this ledge. But you put a box on it and that's how you get your boost. See, did I just get that added to my objectives? I think I hadn't found the door yet that wanted me to get that yet. Let's not think about secrets too much yet. There's probably a door like at the end here. Oh, hello. That there's probably a door at the end somewhere that needs to be opened by these. I don't think I've seen it yet. The world is full of limitless beauty, and I wish to see as much of it as I can. At. So our characters so far are the, are the blacksmith and At. I would love to give them all voices, but it's very hard to keep track of all the characters when they're just a name, and you don't know how many there are going to be up front. There's a cool narrative to unpack from these games if you can successfully... Uh... Do if you can successfully memorize all the different names and their personalities and narrative through lines and just unpack that all successfully. That gets pretty cool. But given that I'm also doing all the puzzles and whatnot, it can be a little bit of a struggle to keep all of that straight. 
sometimes I feel like that kind of narrative stuff is easier to unpack if you come back afterwards when you've beaten the game and then try to read all the terminals and keep all the characters straight. Very good. That is beautiful. I don't know if I needed 70 gigs to be filled to make the water look a little nicer, but <laughs> okay. Video games got so big. I was gonna I was gonna play this game last night, but it, was, it took two hours to download. Oh, hello. That is a surprisingly not very visible force. That was why it startled me. Hey, you think that there'd be like a more of an obvious like cone to it? Anyway, so there's my my shape, and I can't get to it because the thing is in the way. It's trying to blow me back. And we got lasers. We've got this shovy guy. I think that just turned that fan on and that's it. So that means that it sends that block over the wall. So now we have a block. There's like a suspiciously large room. I am suspicious. It's like the size of old, it's like the size of like half the rooms we've seen so far combined. Do I block the beam? The beam is powering the fan, so yes. So there's our first laser. This one was shooting that, which powered this and made the fan work. But now it's mine. And then things take a moment to charge. And it's gone! Yeah, you're not gonna trick this system by putting this here. Don't think I can like... S nope! I can't quite sneakily jump around that with the, with the uh, box. Worth a go. Just try to get one over on it, you know. Versatile contraption. Fan. Barrier. Steppies. So this is currently blocking that. Nice little tutorial moment showing that you can do long range jammers as long as you have line of sight, basically. You can handle it from all the way back here. I believe what I can do here is I can move it so that it's now pushing this button to open this one while jamming that one at the same time. Which means one object is taking care of two barriers for me. That's probably exactly what they expected me to do. Okay, so we've got a jammer that's behind a wall. Oh. Right, it's that kind of wall. You know what, maybe these... Maybe they could be a little more different in color. I <laughs> keep associating them as being the same one. Uh, let's see. So it's not currently working on anything, but... Interesting. I don't think I can point. I don't think I can use it to pow to jam this right now while it's jammed already. So I can't like use it as a backup, then go the other way. It's gonna have a purpose. It'll let, it'll let me jam that one though. I wonder why it lets me jam that one, but not this one. It almost seems like a bug, because I think they're the same object. It looks like it can be used to jam from behind the barrier, so I can take this one with me. Okay. And you can jam the fans directly. So the piece is mine. Excellent. Every now and then these levels cheat a little bit, and they just have a gate open that makes the level 
it makes it possible to leave because you can't always go backwards the way you came after solving a puzzle. And now we're also getting introduced to the difficulty curve, which is that as I think as I believe a zone will often have green puzzles, yellow puzzles, and red puzzles, and they indicate the difficulty curve. And they unlock, but they unlock different doors. I think I just went past this one and didn't originally interact with it directly. There we go. I am proud of there they are. My children. Out of a world of ruins, they have built a new Jerusalem. And there, your brothers and sisters await you to celebrate your birth. Sure, I'm not going to unpack uh, any of that. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, that's that whole system, the click-click. You say you're proud of all of your children, but yeah, you, you got favorites, right? You felt like got favorites. Uh, so that's the barrier, and here's a beam receptacle receiver. A hole to fill. Blah, 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 blah. I believe you can just straight up, like, plonk these down, and the whole... Things should stay together. Take connector and keep... Yeah, so if I right-click, it keeps the same connections. So I can then put it down without having to reconnect all the connections again. So it's still attached to the beam emitter and the receptacle, which admittedly I don't need anymore because I already got the thing out of it anyway. But then it can reach around the corner to the one that I just found, which then links back to this one, and now the door is open. And where things are going to get real... Real complicated is when they combine all these mechanics into the same puzzles instead of bringing them in one by one. So these are familiar so far. I'm curious to see how many of the puzzle mechanics are returning and how many of them will be new. So this one's pre-connected to that spot. I think I might not be able to connect through the gate itself. But it's going over. Oh, it's uh, this is static. So if I shoot a beam to this, it'll go to that. Because I can't pick this up or change its connections. It's part of the furniture. <laughs> the furniture. Uh, the environment. And there's the previous puzzle. Hmm. I'm gonna think I'm gonna figure you probably can't shoot through gates because that would really fuck up that puzzle if you could just interact with a different level. So I just gotta establish some muscle memory where I always right-click connectors if I want to keep the connections. Be careful about that. I believe you had to manually enable that setting in the first game, which uh, was weird because it's of course you'd want to have the ability to pick up beams without having to reset every connection manually. Alright, so. I shoot this, this opens. What other barriers are there? We're currently shooting this. To keep that open. The moment I pick this up, both these doors close. Okay. Let's add this to my connect connections, and... I believe that's solved. It just takes a moment for this to charge up to open that door, which then leads to that... Leading to there, and it's... Yeah, that's that's the whole puzzle. Okay. Yeah, this is an interesting, interesting safeguard they introduced, which is that there is a charge up to each of these... Which means that you can't get away with just, like, having a... Setting up some kind of moving object that has a beam on it, and then it'll just... Like, tag everything. Like, if you if you manage to make one of those things move around while being connected to everything, and it's just wobbling around, and it sometimes connects... That would break... Like, would potentially break some puzzles once some more complicated mechanics are involved. Because you could just... Get everything... Uh, just, just open for just a second, and then s sneak through them all. But the charge beam means the charge up means that you have to keep the beam connected for a fairly long time, so it has to be a much more stable uh, solution. But I'm pretty sure these games are still 
opening you up to pulling some tricks through either way. By default, I'll just assume that every connection I can get is a good idea to get, and so we will get all of them. I think they're going to introduce here the idea that the beams can't cross. Yep. Yerp. Okay. So I believe each connection, each connector only works with one beam type, so you can't combine them. But also, you try to find out ways to connect these beams without crossing them. Am I, did I just block up my body? Yep. Then that will be broken, and yep. So they cannot cross each other. Let's see if there's anything helpful in here. There's another connector. Okay, so first of all... We no longer need the extra connection, so this is already an easier puzzle. Simply because of the fact that we don't need to connect to these anymore. And now I just need to wrap around behind it with the extra connector we got. Easy. I'm definitely hoping that this game successfully Portal 2's Talos Principle. Because Portal was incredible, but Portal 2 was just absolutely wild as a follow-up. And that was four years later. Once upon a time, a game, a sequel taking four years to come out, felt like an eternity. Boy, or do we live in different uh, worlds now. There's basically games that come out... There's franchises where a game comes out every eight years, and then the trash ones where they come out like every year, and they're just the worst products. The long piece, the most important one. All right, so... Source, destination. Oops. Oops, I disconnected it. I just kind of reflexively wanted to line it up straighter, but then that's that's a pretty rough angle, actually, so that's not quite going to happen. Here's a blue source. Here's a box. That's good. Box means that I can raise a beam connector so that it's at a, it'll just be physically above it, and it'll be shooting the beams over the other beam, which means that they won't cross, which means we're good. We are, in fact, Gucci. I saw so many pieces of clothing that were labeled Gucci this week while I was in Reno, and I was increasingly sure that I'm like, I don't know if any of these are Gucci. <laughs> I don't care about Gucci. But it sounds expensive, like Supreme or whatever. So, either I'm up, I don't, either I, all these people are spending way too much money for some reason, or they're lying, which is more respectable, honestly. Last one, for the third time. We're just kind of settling into a groove at the moment as the uh, mechanics are introduced. I think we're just doing this here. I think I see what's happening. Oopsie. Oops. Got a right click. Ah, put on box. But then turn this off because the box is up in the sky and I can't have that. So... I interact with fans less than ideally, but this guy interacts with the fan terribly. It just gets knocked off instead of flying. But the box is nice and even, and solves all, solved all of my problems. Thank you, child. I have finished preparing your vessel. Now, hear my advice. A new world awaits you, full of dangers and mysteries, signs and wonders. Things that I, in my garden, 
could never have imagined. In that world, you will have to be careful and smart and curious. But above all else, you will have to be human. Hmm. I don't want to dwell on it for too much, too long yet, but I'm very suspicious of the fact that they let me be make a beam go that high. I'm like, is there something around here? Is there anything weird I can connect it to? It's a different experience going into one of these games already aware of the tricks the last one pulled for getting outside of the environment and so on. But that doesn't mean that I can just sit there and spot them on the fly either. It's the blacksmith message? Yep. We're back. Yeah, this, this is the hub. So we're back here. There we go. I haven't messed them up yet, but they might just not be mess up a bull yet. Step into the light, child, and awaken. Whatever happens, we're in it together. Lilith. We have Lilith, the blacksmith, and At. This seems bad for me. This death? Ah, you're awake. Welcome to the world of the living. Oh. Okay. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Were they fucking with me? Did they did they remake the first game's entire aesthetic and trappings just to make me think that was happening? I imagine on some level some of that's going to come up again, like just because it would function as a weird tutorial otherwise. But ha, uh, so we are following up the storyline where the awakening already happened and they went out into the world. She's looking a little different from uh, how they were, how the robots looked, looked when I remember though. A little more fleshy looking, a little more uncanny. I'm alive. Indeed you are. And I'm glad to see you're so enthusiastic about existence. But I suspect you're also more than a little confused. Don't worry, everyone is confused at first. You see, we all start out without a full knowledge of our own history, so we have the freedom to form our own opinions. Ah, uh, yes, my secret cousin, Neith. <laughs> I could really use some pointers. Of course. You want the short version or the long version? I want to know everything in excruciating amounts of detail. All right, you asked for it. A long time ago, our ancestors dominated this planet. Ooh. We call ourselves human like they did, but they were organic. They built an advanced technological civilization, but unfortunately their impact on the ecosphere caused changes in the climate and an extremely contagious virus was released from the permafrost. Didn't they have advanced medicine too? That's something our historians still debate. Why weren't they more prepared? Why did they invest so many resources into making war and so few into useful research? It's hard to understand, but no matter the reason, in the end, they simply ran out of time. Why would anyone not take vaccines? Uh, so where did we come from then? A team led by a scientist, Alexandra Drennan, began a project that was intended to create a new humanity. 
but knowing that there wasn't enough time, Drennan initiated a process, a series of iterations inside a simulation that would lead to the emergence of true artificial intelligence. That's why we remember Drennan as the progenitor. The simulation was controlled by Elohim, who wasn't really meant to be intelligent in the proper sense of the word, but it all took much longer than anyone had expected. And over the centuries, Elohim actually became sentient. Sentient and afraid. He didn't want the simulation to end, so he tried to cheat. I feel sorry for him, really. The whole simulation was built around learning to defy him. It must have been hard to be in that position. Aww. Being, being like meta narratively sympathetic for the villain of a video game. Like, we're getting really, we're getting really meta here where it's just like, that is the archetypical villain of every archetypical. Why don't, wait, I'm losing my mind. No, it is archetypical, right? Have I, have I reverse psyched myself out that now I'm getting fucked up over the the real one? I'm gonna lose my mind. It's fine. It's fine. I'm stuck in a trap on pronouncing that word, and now I'm just triple guessing it. <laughs> this has been an ongoing thing. Uh, curse me for ever learning it in the first place. The <laughs> but like I was just talking about how there's always that villain and in that role, and that the games are almost always about defying them. And in this series, there is itself a game in the game. It's the simulation. Which I guess is also a thing that happens in Portal, like there is like, you are solving chambers that are themselves an artificial construct in that narrative that just meant to be like a game you play, but that's for testing. And this was also kind of for testing, but it is like, it is a simulation, it is a game, it is a thing, it is a thing you beat and it has a through line. And now we're, we're acknowledging that text afterwards and that character that was sympathetic because they, they were damned to be that character. Like... In a narrative, it is generally presumed that the character is a person who made choices and then became the villain of their own of their own will. Like like the, like like in many of these uh, settings, like if there's a villain in a puzzle game, they probably chose to be there and then fought to maintain some level of power or deception or something. In some ways, Elohim did choose to lie to us and stuff like that, but he was forced into a place, accidentally became a real person, and then was faced with his own mortality with no will. Like, he was just forced in that situation with against his will, and so it's like, it's really, it's hard to condemn someone for not wanting everyone to leave and for him to end. But that's what happened. He didn't seem that bad when he spoke to me in my dreams. When the simulation was completed, he became part of all of us, and it really changed him. It freed him, I think. You'll always hear him in sleep mode, taking care of you. That's what he is, after all. A caretaker. Was there anyone else in the simulation? Yes, there was Milton, the intelligence in charge of the Archive, a project initiated by Arkady Chernyshevsky, which was meant to collect all of humankind's knowledge. His story is a lot like Elohim's, but Milton became the ultimate cynic. They say he's part of us too, in some way. And the simulation created us. It did. Long after our ancestors died out, the first new human was born. We call her the Founder, although the name she took was Athena. She then woke up Cornelius and used Tathias. Together, using the tools left behind by the Progenitor's team, they created ten more humans. These twelve who followed the Founder are known as the First Companions. Athena and the First Companions then set out to rebuild the world, and they founded the city of New Jerusalem. But then one day, she suddenly disappeared, 
Many still await her return. And how do I fit in? Before the Founder vanished, she set a goal for this city. We call it The Goal. Capital G and all. To make 1,000 new humans and so complete New Jerusalem. Well, that's the official story, the way the mayor tells it. I was immediately a little suspicious of the word goal because I'm just, I'm, I'm ready for there to be something wrong, obviously. And I'm, I've been a little too primed by games like Bloodborne and whatnot to, to know about the archaic spelling of jail being really close to the word goal. And I'm like, ah, uh, we'll see if I, if that, if that exact thing comes up or not, that'd be funny. So what's the unofficial story? Some of the first companions like Byron don't believe that Athena really wanted us to stop growing. They think her ideas have been twisted and embellished. And what do you think? They may be right, but I didn't see Athena very much in the years before she left. Maybe actually leaving the simulation and seeing the destruction left behind by our ancestors changed her mind. Thank you. That was pretty exhaustive. You're welcome. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them. When you're done, head outside. They're waiting for you. Your birth is quite the event. I'm not super compatible. I'm not super compa uh, compatible with big info dumps, but for those that are, there it was. Oh, uh, let's see. Tell me about yourself. Me? Well, as you can tell by my number, I'm quite old. I wasn't one of the first companions, but I did know Athena personally. She and Cornelius taught me a lot. Although I suppose I've made a few improvements here and there since those days. We didn't have a lot to work with in the beginning. So the first game was a long time ago. Will there, will there be new humans after me? You've only just been born, and already you step right into a major controversy. The goal, as most people understand it, was fulfilled the moment you were born. Now, New Jerusalem is complete, and we can live in balance, without damaging the world like our ancestors did. That's the orthodox view, I suppose, but there are many who disagree. You'll have to figure out where you stand for yourself. Hold on. Am I immortal? You won't age like our ancestors did, but of course, there is always some wear and tear. You should probably schedule a checkup every decade or so. Oh, and be a bit careful with water. You won't die if it rains or anything, but we're running low on insulation material. I wouldn't go swimming if I were you. What will you do now? Your, what will you do now that your job is obsolete? I... I haven't really thought about it. This is all I've done for the last few centuries, and... I like doing it. I guess for now I'll just take a break, and... We'll see what happens. I'm ready to get going. Oh, one more thing. Like all citizens of New Jerusalem, you have access to the interface, which you can use to read the news, chat to your fellow citizens, and so on. It's a crucial tool, and modular too. You can easily add new functions. Just don't subscribe to too many newsletters at once. How many newsletters can there be? There's like a thousand people. <laughs> Maybe less than a thousand people? Sorry, since that sounds like some of the original people are, are gone. So it's been a long time since the first game happened, apparently. And also, apparently, my robot voice became Winton Overwatch. I don't know why that happened, but here we go. I don't think I can talk to her again. I did finish all of her dialogue. Welcome to the flesh space. Uh, that was a fun little reference to the previous game that they did. 
to then tear it away. There's like a self-awareness of like this element of like, Oh, we're back! Oh, this is neat! And then over the course of playing the tutorial and it's all of the same mechanics from the first game and the same progression system and the same Tetris blocks you're in the same setting, you're just like, All right! Is this it though? <laughs> like, they didn't spend all these years to just bring back the first game, right? I already played a whole expansion to that game. Like, we've done it. <laughs> Alright, so green door, red door. Red door me no open. Yes. Aha! Red doors don't open. Imagine. So I think I was right to not obsess over our secrets too hard because I think there weren't any. Institution for Applied Nomadics Extended Lifespan. Wait. There aren't real humans in those, right? Like, still? Well, this hallway is fucked up. Not a great sign, is it? This is a reconstruction of the chamber of the first companions, where the first companions rested until the founder awoke them. The original chamber was disassembled in the early days of New Jerusalem. Oh, this is a... It's a museum. But like, an artistic recreation museum. Like, not a, not a real one at all. So that's the pods that we were in, essentially. So they're not life support pods, they're just robot storage pods that eventually woke up. We could and we should. We stopped to think about it. We, we stopped to think and it turns out we could and we should. Institute for Applied Nomadics. Remember, say no to bugs, ha! <laughs> we do what we must because we can. For the good of all of us, except the ones who are dead. Which is everyone. Look, it's 1K! Hey, 1K! Welcome to New Jerusalem! Shouldn't the mayor be starting his speech? This should be interesting. At least give him a chance. Dear citizens of New Jerusalem, many years ago, when the founder stepped forth from the simulation, this was a land of ruins. Our ancestors, in their hubris, undermined the natural foundations on which their world had been built. Because of their arrogance, our species found itself on the brink of annihilation. The Founder aimed to set us on a new course. You never even met the Founder. Her vision was of a city, a new civilization that would know its limits. It would not repeat the mistakes of the past, nor impose its will on this earth. To that end, she set the great goal we have been striving towards. One thousand new humans. And today we have... Oh dear, what's that? Oh. People of New Jerusalem, I am Prometheus, and I will reveal that which was hidden. The flame has awoken and summons you. Who is brave enough to answer its call? We await you upon our island where... Curse you, Pandora. You will not chain me again. Huh. Not gonna lie, the Prome Prometheus was a little bit badly animated and acted in that scene. The, uh... Him being captured... Look, 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 look how dramatic that looks. Him being captured needed to be a little bit more, like, strenuous, and the voice actor needed to give it a little more... <laughs> he was so monotonous. He was so, like, monologue -y. Anyway, I googled the significance of the number 452, because I figured that there would be something there. And, uh, yeah, the, uh... 452 is apparently, like, an angel number, conveying the me message of hope and optimism for your future endeavors. 
If 452 is appearing in your life, it's a sign that you trust the process and have faith in the divine timing of your journey. The angels are telling you to remain calm and not give up hope as great rewards are inbound. So, the moment I saw that the the guy giving the speech was number 452, I'm like, okay, well his number probably means something. Let's just look that up. It won't be always easy to get everything that's going on sometimes, because sometimes it might be like, ah, oh, it's a specific uh, scripture verse or something, but you have to know which Bible to check or who knows what, but... That one was easy. Well, this was an abrupt transition. We're just here now. I told now. you we should have investigated those energy readings. And I told him there's something up with those structures. The mayor's just being cautious. This isn't caution, it's stagnation. Exploration, too dangerous. Expansion, too dangerous. We barely even scavenge anymore. You call it stagnation, I call it balance. And I call you an idiot. Here's a thought. Damn. Try to be a little more diplomatic when you talk to the mayor. See what I'm working with here, 1K? I'm gonna need a fresh pair of eyes on this expedition. Someone who hasn't spent several centuries hearing about the goal and the founder and all that nonsense. If you're up for an adventure, meet us at the conference room. Nah, I'm just gonna sit this game out. You guys had fun though. Big ol' city. I can see why there would be such an emphasis on balance, because you would want to avoid recreating the problems that the humans did that made the world unlivable. That said, Technically, humans coming back as robots is kind of terrifying because now a bunch of people that can't be killed by the humans' mistakes can just recreate them. You could infinitely expand with infinite robots and cities and also then not die of climate change. <laughs> so, whoops. Attend briefing. Ah, that's not a Tetris piece. What am I going to do? Oh, nope. Oh. They're off in the other direction. They've been shepherded off. I'm over here now. Josephus 558. Can I talk to you, Josephus? Let's see. Wonder if this if these will keep. Okay, are are is, is every number an angel number? I don't really know how angel, what angel numbers are. I was just googling significance of number, but now I'm getting fucking 558 also is a number. 558 is abundance and prosperity is just around the corner, so stay focused on your plan. This is like the same. You know, numbers are stupid actually. Maybe uh, the number wasn't special, or maybe it's special for completely different reasons than Google is serving me up, which is trash. Oh, hello. Uh, having to translate text with my like this is weird when you think that's just how I see or whatever or it's the language I speak anyway <clears throat> be humble recognize the limits we are not above nature I think that's all the text okay be constant remember the goal perfection is unchanging why can't I talk to this he's just gonna stare at me who what's broken now oh Is our new world doing okay, buddy? You've been here for about half of the time. Maybe. Hello. Oh. All right, listen up. I know you're all having fun down there, but the grid is overloaded again, so Maybe you could switch off your personal consoles or your lawn mowers or whatever the hell you've all decided to switch on all at once. I might not be around to babysit you for a while and you don't want stuff breaking while Pellegrino's in charge, do you? That's it. That's it. Don't worry, Wonkay. I see you there in the elevator. I'll have you moving again in a jiffy. Great way to start life in the city, huh? You guys reintroduce lawnmowers? What the hell is a jiffy? 
these bloody language libraries. You guys brought back lawns? Like, now that I'm thinking about that, why would you bring back lawns? That's one of the dumbest things that humans ever invented. They serve no purpose, and they're wasteful of resources, both in their maintenance and their, uh, well, I guess maintenance is everything, but, you know, the water to maintain them, and then the, the supplies and tools to cut them pointlessly and all that. Lawns are dumb, and there's so much of it down there. What have you done? Hey guys, now that this game's actually out, I'm planning on playing it a lot this week, so if you want to have videos of Talos Principle 2 faster than what is allotted by the normal two videos a day schedule, hop on Patreon on the early access tier and there will be some larger videos coming soon.